Hello everyone, my name is Emily Golia. I'm an actor, singer, and creator here in Los Angeles, and I am so excited to be here with traveling pop producer, John McLucas. How's it going, John? You know how to bring the hype and the tone of your introduction, and I love that. I'm ready doing fabulous. Go. I've got my, my latte here, we're ready right. to party, and uh, thanks for having me on today. Yeah, I'm so happy to be talking with you. So, okay, so traveling, pop producer what does that mean and where are you at this moment well as hype as that sounds right now i'm still actually with my family because it's right after the holidays which is near san francisco we both have our like yeah we we both have this up yeah this is a spare spare bedroom kind of a thing but um very shortly we'll be slowly working through the south chunk of the country and uh, we have actually maybe by the end of tonight, about five different projects set up where artists are flying in or we're going to them if they're kind of on loosely on the route and producing tracks together, recording, going to a studio or holding out in an Airbnb. So we have something in Santa Fe, Virginia, New York, Arkansas, and then potentially Atlanta as well. So we'll go to them and then have people just come in as well if if they don't happen to be on that route and then uh, make music together. I'm obsessed with that. Okay, well, before we get any further, I'm going to show everyone some clips of what you're all about. How to make an amazing Juice World style song. No long intro. Let's get started. Drums. So for our drums, we are absolutely staying with trap drums in this realm. They're going to be pretty impactful, quick, and smooth. You won't find a ton of ambience on the drums unless done in a specific section or with an automation, but with some samples I used from Slate Digital and Kyle Beats, we get this. In case you're wondering, pitching around the hi-hat is something that I automate inside a pitch shift plugin here, but you can also do it automating the sample directly in your drum sampler. Groove. In this blended trap world, the downbeat or one beat is always pretty strong and prominent, and we're typically not having too many eighth note subdivisions driving the song. That's a bit of drum jargon, but that just means if this is our groove, I want this down. Um, okay, I love all your music. I love all your work. Tell me, I guess, okay, wait, I have so many questions in my head. Let's start at the beginning. Where were you born? Where'd you grow up? And then how did you get involved in music? So I grew up about 30 minutes south of San Francisco, California, and I got started not even through, oddly enough, not through like an intrinsic desire to play music, but my mom started taking guitar lessons in her 40s because she had to really be a caregiver for quite a while when her father had a stroke when she was a young teenager and had always wanted to play music but never did and so when in her 40s she kind of came to both of us and said like pick something and try it like do this because it could be really cool for you and I'm just like a really loud guy so I picked the drums and two lessons later she bought a drum kit for this you know 10 year old and my dad was not very happy about it but Uh you know she knew the vibe was there and I I had that kit for 16 years I took it all on tour across the country and just did everything with that kit so that that was the gateway drug was just really my mom being like pick something and try it oh my god I love mom. that is so wonderful no she's incredible she's incredible so when did you realize okay I'm really good at this Like, this is what my career path is going to be. I think, interestingly enough, it was the moment, so in high school, uh, you know, obviously going through a a variety of bands, but I put on a show in the driveway of our house. And I think when I looked back, like looking back on it, you know, I, I got put together the list. I got all the audio gear so we could have a PA system. I rented a porta potty so we didn't have all these people in our house. I got a permit from the city so I could block off the street. I told them it was a block party, which it was not. And then I canvassed the area around our house with flyers. So I said, hey, this is what we're doing. If this is at all gonna be, might be kind of unsettling for you to hear the noise, let me know and I'll make sure to like get you movie tickets or something so you can go somewhere else and I'll treat you to that. Like, like- Oh my gosh, you fully produced a concert yeah and and that moment to me is is when it's like okay like I really 
I really care about this stuff ah. at an intense level and like we'll go pretty obtusely for like a 17 year old uh to to go make something happen oh my god and, I love it yeah that, that, that was probably the moment I was like something I, I don't know quite what yet but like something's here yeah if I'll do I'm that gonna follow this I'm gonna follow these feelings Yes. You're so you seem so like open and wonderfully collaborative and like, very easy to work with. And I mean, even your what you say on your website is just like, this is what I do. This is how I talk. This is how I work. Like, if that seems like something you're gonna vibe with, come my way. And I think that's so beautiful. Thank you. Like that is such a. I'm I'm like I'm not even producing any pop stuff. I'm like I'm in. I'm ready. Like, let's go. John, where are you going to be late June? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Oh my gosh. So when did you, you're, so you're a musician, but when did you start doing all the pop, like the producing and when were you like, I'm focusing on pop and this is it. Well, I actually came into pop before, well, beforehand, I was actually a bit of a pop hater and, and you know, anti-pop elitist. Mm -hmm. And that was probably a decade ago. And <laughs> There was no particular song in general, but as I think I had to work with somebody, I had to, I think when I was really early on with recording, my, I originally came in to recording and production to work with prog metal and prog rock bands, like oh 10, God. 20 minute songs. What? That was my thing. That was like my, my background. That's I, I like my drumming touring stuff too was mostly in like progressive and some like radio rock metal. So wow. I came from that world. And to me, pop was, you know, just, you know, like incumbent, you know, ah, pop, ah, like that energy. Totally. And then I think somebody asked if we could do a pop song. And I was like, yeah, like fine, easy. And, and it's, it sounded like a bag of farts. <sighs> and so I was like, oh, that sucked. And everything about that was a hot pile of trash. So why was that? Like, why couldn't I do that? And it kind of just started my interest there. And, and oh. then I kept getting addicted as I realized like, holy crap, this is disgustingly difficult <laughs> to, yeah. to figure out and arrange. And then- uh, There's an art to it. People, yeah. I think because it's everywhere, people are like, oh, well, it's whatever, but there really is an art to it. The challenge of making something seem so seamless that like you don't realize how complex it is. Like, you know, I always joke about saying, you know, my dad, like to where my dad is just like, Oh, that was good. You know, like, to get somebody to just be immersed in it for, for three minutes and just be like, oh, felt great. That's so, yeah. so hard. And really? yeah, that's been the that's been the journey of the last decade is like, why was that so hard? And how can I do that? I better? Love that. So if I feel like you kind of figured it out, but how was the pandemic for you? I mean, it was so crazy <sighs> for everyone. And like, what do we do and how do we make music and help? Like, but now you're mm -hmm. about to travel the country. So Tell me how you got there. <laughs> well, I I was, I will say a little blessedly lucky in starting to get remote collaboration together mm. before the pandemic started. Like that was something, okay, that was March, 2020. So it would be like September, 2019. I started to make that shift. I started trying to figure it out and get the process down. And how can I, how can I serve an artist in a way that, they feel excited about and that they are connected to and where I'm feeding off of them, they're feeding off of me and, and I get all of their energy and intention into a song through Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. So that took some time. Like I, I had sorted that out, I think by the time it hit, wow. granted I did have a tremendous amount of things when the world shut down, the same thing. Everybody's like, you know what? Everybody lost their job and I don't need to do this right now. So like, yeah. you know, so we had, we had the same, a lot of the same shifts, but then uh, pretty pretty quickly I, I've got enough people that I've met over the first like seven years that some people were like I have nothing but time so <laughs> let's do it like so it's just a shift there and then um, not too many hiccups fortunately because I had, I had had it I had had I had it set up luckily although I didn't know I would need it so badly that's amazing it's like the music career gods were like yo get this together now in September and you're ready to go yeah That's oh fantastic. Yeah. well you I'm so excited for you and your journey across the United States that's about to happen and you're so talented I'm just so happy that you're going to be here on the Phoenix platform going to be an amazing way for people to find your work and for you to find new collaborators and let everyone know where you are at all times because mm -hmm. are you gonna do like a whole like TikTok 
like traveling man thing or are you or are you just gonna like go no through? we we I have we have to way i'm just wondering no we have to document it I, i'm at that precipice right now so to, to, to answer your question yes the <laughs> ideal situation just pure cash flow wise the ideal situation is i would love to have a creator full-time with me traveling with me and i'm not quite there um so i'm like ah, i really want to take that leap and just it have like so literally time. a creator next to me so like we'd hang up from this interview and they'd already be cutting up five tiktoks from it you right. know like okay that's what you're doing today boom and then tomorrow i have a conversation with an artist and then there's some good insights so that makes note session so then they cut that up but like obviously that's a tremendous investment i would have to yeah i have a team that already supports so considering somebody where it's like lose your life comes next to me like that's the ideal vision so that probably won't happen for maybe okay. the next like three to six months but i'm hoping by june i think that should be something where i could pay somebody like a really competitive salary and have them come travel with us oh my and God, I love that. then in the meantime i'll be doing it myself but in a limited capacity because you know i love and fun job in I, itself it is yeah i'm, I'm all about doc i'm all about documenting and that's how I've built up my community and, and the people that trust me with their music. But, you know, yeah, it's an investment of time. And I also got to be in the studio, in the trenches with their stuff. So it's always this balance. I'm definitely going to do my best to awesome. document the heck out of it. Well, I can't wait to follow it. And I'm so excited to have met you. And yeah, good luck with everything. And we'll talk soon. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. And uh, just that is all. Yeah. Remember, that's you're just end. one that's, song away. That's the interview. There we go. That's Great. it. Boom, we did oh, it. Wait. Okay. <laughs> Cheers.